game dev journey. If you want to know how to make an infinite scrolling background like this for your menu screens or abstract platformer, then stick around because this video will show you just how to do it. Welcome everyone to this Construct 3 tutorial with Rob from Game Dev Journey. Today I'll be showing you how to make an infinite scrolling abstract background. Let's start a new project. We'll choose SD landscape and I'll call it scrolling background. I'm not going to optimize for pixel art and we'll say create. What we'll do is rename this layer to background. We're going to add a sprite to it, which I'll call BG. Click. Now I have a whole host of backgrounds which I can use. And here you can see if I switch between the frames, they just have different patterns on them. Each square is 64 by 64 pixels. Stick with that. So if I put one in the middle here, I'll show you the idea of what of the effect that we're trying to create. Let's go to the event sheet for our background. Let's create a system event for on start of layout and on the start of the layout we are just going to choose our animation frame so um, we'll choose uh, for instance frame one but we could choose any of those frames that will just choose the block that we're going to create and what we want to do is capture the current position of this block so we're going to find out what its current position is and we're going to move it up and to the right and once it's gone one block up and to the right we're going to bring it back down and move it up and to the right again so it's just going to keep moving up and to the right and that'll give us an effect of all the blocks scrolling past now in order to capture its current position we need to give it some instance variables so we're going to add an instance variable here called start x that's its current x position and another one called start y for its current y position so we're going to capture and store those start x and start y positions when when the game starts when the layout starts so what we'll do um, is we'll add another action here we'll go to bg and we will um, set its start x to its current x so we'll set start x to self dot x and we'll set its start y to its self dot y so now we know where the block is when the layout starts. Now we'll start the scrolling. So we'll add another event here and we'll scroll um, every 0 0.05 seconds. This you can play with. This, is, this will determine how fast the background scrolls. And what we're going to do is move it up and to the right. So we're going to add an action to our background here and we're going to set its x value to the to its current x and we want to move it to the right so that'll be plus one and its current y dot y minus one remember negative y values are going up the screen. So if I show you what this does at the moment, if we preview, you'll see 
Why is the block spinning? Uh, what did I do? Oh, I did rotate. Sorry. How did I do that? Set X. Sorry, that's what it's meant to do. So if we run it, now you'll see that block moving up and to the right. And I saw it was also flicking through the animations, so we must just turn the animations off. But the block is moving up and to the right, and it'll just keep going. Let's just turn the animations off. So if we set the speed here to zero, it won't go through all the animations. Right. So this block moves up and to the right. Up and to the right. So what we want to do is fill the screen with multiple blocks and move them up to the right. Now, as you saw, the block just keeps going up, 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 up and away. It doesn't return to its original position. So we need to return it to its original position. So let's just add a blank action here and we'll return the background block to its original position. So we need to actually compare its X value compare its x. So when its x value is equal to the itself.x plus 64, so that's one block up. And another condition, when its y value is equal to its self.y minus 64, that's also one up one block up, because these blocks are 64 by 64. Then we're going to return it to its starting position. So then we're going to say, um, our background will set its X back to um, start. Um, uh, self dot Start x and we'll set its y to self dot start y. Okay, so now if we run it, you should see it moves a block up and then comes back down. Okay, why is it not? Doing that, let's just see. It's x will equal to self x. Ah, that's why. Sorry, this should be self um, dot start x. And this should be self dot start y. Okay, so now it should flick back to its start position. There we go. So once it's moved a block up diagonally, it comes back to its original position. So now if we fill the screen with these, we will get a nice effect. So let's turn on the grid. So we'll show the grid. We've got it at 32 by 32. That should be fine. We do snap to grid, it should make our life a little easier. Here we go, and I'm just going to duplicate now, control and drag, control and click and drag, and drop. And once we've got a nice row, we can just highlight the row and then pull it down. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do that, pull these down. And now let's have a look at what it looks like. So if we run up game, there you get a nice scrolling background effect for an abstract platformer or a menu screen background, whatever you want to use it for. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you learned something. Please uh, like the video if you did, and I hope to see you again next time.